Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel where I help you become a better artist. Today I'm going to show you a sketchbook tour of not one, but two of my sketchbooks. Now, the majority of these sketchbooks have doodles in them that the public has never seen. And if I have posted them, it's mostly the more in-depth 10 to 6 or 6 to 10 hour illustrative work, which I do want to add that these bigger drawings that you see in here, the ones that took a longer time, will probably be a future lesson on my channel. So we'll be able to go more in-depth on how I achieved some of these textures. Because right now I'm starting to grow the database. And, you know, we've gone over fur, scales, hair, and those kinds of tutorials. But um, I have a lot more in store for you. So I'll just kind of walk you through some of these. The majority of my sketchbook... I mean, they are creatures, of course, because that's what I do for a living. But also, I just want to say that a lot of these sketches are... The thing that I like to tell students is that your sketchbook is a diary, okay? And you don't have to start drawing in your sketchbook to please other people. Because one, it's really nobody's business. And two, it's for you to learn and you to gain skills and everything because... Let's face it, each one of us, we definitely can improve in certain areas. Okay. Probably notice this one. This is my just previous lesson that I posted. Um, like an iguana. I actually forget what this is for. Is this some kind of demon? Can I have a book? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, here's just playing with uh, what maybe a Grant's Gazelle looks like from another dimension. So... Again, the materials I use are 4B and Black Prismacolor. And you'll see like a lot of a lot of doodles and stuff that may not look finished. And I was just practicing some things with uh, different shading techniques and different pencils, maybe. Yeah, just here's some character work. Uh, <laughs> this creature was, uh, I believe, it was on the cover of Imagine Effects in 2017 18 could be could be mistaken yeah see i just i kind of just doodle some very light thumbnails too something that i definitely go over in all my lessons some more creature work okay just some different views of it practicing with adding ink and pencil and uh, colored pencil, I believe. That was a, that was a while ago. I don't remember when I did that. Just kind of moving through here. As you can see, I opened some of these pages up, doodled a little, little bit, and then I uh, didn't do anything with it. <laughs> Here's some more some skeletal work for creatures that I made up. It was that one creature from a couple pages back where it looked like it had a giant thing on its head. So I just wanted to do the bone structure too. Because that's very important. Creature designers definitely pay attention to the bone structure. There's some atmospheric perspective, which is a lesson that I just went over. Showing you how you could do some buildings, pull it forward. And there's a, it looks like a creepy Blair Witch. And then children walking around with her. So kind of kind of scary there. Uh, there's an egg with a demon in it. It's an old soldier. I got a lot of drawings here, guys, so bear with me. Hey, and I do regular animals, too. This is how I learn as a creature designer, always trying to look at reference and, you know, sometimes looking at infant versions and adolescent versions of animals that are out there is definitely the way to go. Some more design work of bone structures and canopies that might fit on top of a creature's head. More character work. You can see all the the little notes that I give it, you know, different views. So the back view, you can see the muscle tones, skin patterns, uh, the head, little call outs, functional features, put atmospheric perspective in there, put the scale for the human compared to the creature. So this is what you call just a typical design page for any creature designer that might be doing something for film or games. There's some more doodles. All right, getting into the bigger stuff. So this was the start of a personal project of mine called Ecore 117. 
Those of you that have been following me for several years now, you probably are familiar with ECOR 117. It's a fictitious planet that when uh, land surveyors and scientists travel to it, they go out into the field, they take their little sketchbooks, and they start sketching the creatures that they see. And this is just one gigantic, deadly insect that will eat your face. There's a little environment here where it lives. There's the size compared to the human up here. And I have all of the callouts for the anatomy. Okay, so again, design page, head and side view, head and front view. And there's definitely some more coming up too of my project. Uh, just some ballpoint pen work, fast sketching, probably, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes worth. Uh, here's another creature called a decorpa. Again, part of my Ecor 117 project. I'll bring it a little, little closer so you can see some of the details. Okay, there's a human, the scale of the bug. There's a little environment that it's in with some trees and some shrubbery and stuff. Not a nice creature. Full page of thumbnails. Full page of thumbnails. My OCD kicks in, so I have to make sure everything is numbered evenly and and uh, I can fit as much as I can to the page. Another full sheet of thumbnails, but this is for humans. So I'm, I love Norse mythology. I love Vikings. I like all of that medieval warrior type setting. I, oh, I love it. Okay, here's some creature thumbnails that I was going to bring. I was going to choose one that I wanted. And, I, and then I started working on some different head designs. Okay, so definitely not not your friendly neighborhood insect, that's for sure. Just some different, I, I, again, I tried to neatly place them on the page. And I gave each one a distinct design so they're not all the same. But they kind of look similar at the same time. Here I started getting into the functional feature of it. Okay, so we have what the mouth looks like open with some arrows showing the function. Got some notes calling it out. Here's what the head looks like closed. Just looks like, uh, honestly, something out of Silent Hill, which is kind of what I was going for. Just something really spooky and scary that you would find on an alien planet, too. Okay, and here's a final version of that right there. Okay, this was, this was actually mostly black Prismacolor. I didn't use much 4B pencil. Okay, and I actually made a ZBrush model of this thing. Okay, here's some human work. Um, some more faces up there, more thumbnails, just some notes calling out maybe what this long-legged creature could be. Uh, ballpoint pen work. Uh, I, I'm a huge fan of architecture. I really like architecture, so this is this is a lot of fun for me. Uh, this is a combination of several animals, maybe what it'll look like on a different planet. Uh, more houses, uh, actually a village, if you want to say. Okay. This is all ballpoint pen, by the way. Let's come through, more ballpoint pen work. This was all, I, I tried to go freehand. I didn't want to use a ruler because I, trying to train my eye, this is more practice than anything, trying to train my eye to line up the perspective lines in my head with the vanishing point off of the page. We're gonna get into vanishing points and all that fun stuff at a later time. Working on some creatures, the bone structure first, and then muscle, fat, skin, hair, scales on top, and then another angle of that same head. You can see it there. Okay. I love anthropomorphism, so a lot of the themes for the uh, Facebook group daily spit paint you know you can mix it well it was one of the themes i don't remember what exactly what it was but i started to mix an owl and a bird or <laughs> an owl is a bird an owl and a human okay um more thumbnail work for environments just sketching them out quickly more doodles okay ah this creature so those of you that have seen the movie The Mist, you can probably see the influence, right? The Mist is one of my all-time favorite movies. It's just a phenomenal movie. I love it. 
Uh, just try to do something in vain of, of the mist. Um, this creature is called the Carphenoid. Uh, I gave it a little medieval warrior for scale. Um, sketching some swords and the hilt and the butt of the sword and everything just to get some designs out. This cre or this uh, character that I was making up, his name's Osmar. Seeing different facial features. Um, my my brother-in-law was uh, or is a pastor, so I did a lot of lesson work for him. So whenever he was preaching on Sundays, I would do some sketches for his sermons. More creature thumbnails. Yippee! Hey, look at that. More creature thumbnails. See, guys? I'm telling you. Every lesson that I'm going to give almost, I'm going to tell you, please fill your sketchbooks up with thumbnails. This is so important. Uh, this creature. <laughs> it's like a triceratops and an ostrich together. Don't mess with its babies. This creature's straight out of hell. <laughs> I think this was also an Imagine Effects. Um, it was... A combination, probably the most combined of, uh, you know what, that looks kind of kind of blurry, I don't know. Okay, so that was a combination of 4B and Black Prismacolor together. Here, I was seeing if I could mix a camel spider with an ox and a turtle. I didn't know how that was going to turn out, but I believe this is when it turned out. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't finish it. I guess I jumped into some characters. I probably finish it later. There you go. That was an old art station. Oh yeah, here, look at this. More. So I was starting to mix a turtle, an ox, and camel spider. Yeah, there was a big warrior. I think his name was Bala. Here's Bala, right there. Okay. All right. We're cooking along here, folks. Some character work. More characters. More characters. Hey, more. And another one. More thumbnails. More sketches and doodles. Oh, yeah, look at this. This creature called the Doomer Hoblin. This is the common. This is what I was working on before with the camel spider, the ox, and the turtle mixed together. An absolutely massive boss creature, just for fun. Me practicing mixing animals together. Love doing it. More thumbnails. Fill your pages up with this. Very quick work with, uh, I believe, yeah, that was with pencil. Another creature. More character than anything. Um, some more... Oh yeah, so now we're getting into some more creatures for my Ecor 117 project. I love doing... You know, now that I'm speaking about this project as I'm filming this video, I really miss it. I even have a Facebook page for it. And then I just stopped. So I think that... I will probably be making a, another book soon. I actually did make a book. It was like six years ago for my Kickstarter. But I think I'm going to make a new one of thumbnails and then my Ecor 117 project. So there's some more creatures for that project. Some notes, call outs, um, a money shot showing you what it looks like, some action shots, what it looks like darting out of the dirt. Um, here, what it looks like laying flat against the mud where it looks like a stone. That's why these soldiers are walking along talking to each other. And these are the actual creatures and they just hide under the mud and then they come up and bite your ankles. Pretty freaky. Some more creatures. <laughs> this creature is from my Ecor 117 project. It's called the Charney Scarn. <laughs> I never forget that. Uh, I really wanted to play up with the design of this thing, mainly the toes and the feet. This is just a fun creature. It's not mean. It's just kind of grumpy and it just, you know, sits in the jungle and, and chews on, on sticks all day. There's some more atmospheric perspective practice of trees and, and just different alien looking plants. Uh, <laughs> here we go. Uh, this was just a, a character and this creature killed the character 
and then they they named the character after it, or they named the creature after it in the field. It was kind of funny. Very ugly creature, by the way. More thumbnails. More thumbnails of creatures. Can you tell I love doing that? There's another one. Again, um, I'll be giving more lessons into fur, too. How to make it look wet, how to make it look really fine. Alright, more thumbnails. Um, this is real atmospheric perspective, folks, and this was just with one pencil. Okay, I, I, I shaded with uh, black Prismacolor, I believe, through the whole thing. Ah, uh, yeah. And there's another creature, Ecor 117. I think that was for a modeling company that made some place, like a little character out of it on their um, their game board. Again, more of my personal project, showing you the environment that it lives in, what it looks like hanging from the tree, what it looks like eating the face of somebody, little notes and call outs. Basically, it looks like a tree. Okay, so you've probably seen this before, maybe online somewhere. This, the name of this creature is the Orpa Chakra. It's probably the most deadly on Ecor 17, definitely an apex predator. Uh, there's a little soldier hiding behind a rock. Little notes and call outs of what each body part is. All right, one sketchbook. Let's move to another one. As promised, I believe it's this one. And then we will be wrapping it up. So without further ado, let me just make sure that this actually is the one. Yes, it is. Okay, so this sketchbook is mainly my Demon series, okay? Um, and some commercial work that I've done for, you know, games and stuff. And commercials. There's some chameleons. Yeah, different, different sketches of faces. Hold on a second, let me try to move this over here. I have a, a special light. I can probably move the light and you probably see it more. There, that's probably better. Just so you can see some different faces here. These things are very, very mean. You can see up close. Yeah, there you go. Our characters. Try to move that light again because there's like a there's a certain glare right on that, and I think most of it's coming in through the window, so I could be wrong. If I tilt the page up, you probably see it. More character work. Um, I'm probably going to start on the actual demons. Yeah. So these, I don't remember the exact name of every single one. I think this is Bayleth. Okay, these are based on Christianity and stuff. Um, oh, yeah. I know this isn't Mammon. I don't remember who that is. This is Payman. Uh, Beelzebub. Okay, let's see what else I got here. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is Mammon. I don't remember who that is. Oh, did I skip one? No, I did not. Oh, this one. Yeah. That was a fun one to draw. So I'm going to zoom in here so you can see it. All right. Actually, let me try. I'm going to get a little closer like this, so maybe it'll zoom in better. Okay, more demons. As you can see, it's a combination of hard, scaly surfaces, really thick fur and fine fur. There's more. <laughs> Another demon. Let me see. More doodles with pen, mixing different techniques. I don't remember who that was. And I think, let me see if I got, oh yeah, there's more. There we go. Uh, this was for a, 
a French film actually that just came out called The Animal Kingdom. It was a fun little project to work on. It was basically uh, experimentation with human DNA mixing with animals. It's kind of like Island of Dr. Moreau. I haven't seen the movie yet, but let me zoom out here so you can see it. But I heard it's, it's pretty good. Some dinosaur work I did for the game Death Ground coming out. Just some more doodles. Some more doodles. Let's see what else I got in here. All right, I'm going to flip through kind of quickly just to see what we got. Yeah, I mean, I got a ton of ballpoint pen work. Some of the stuff back here I cannot show you just because it's under NDA. Uh, here's an angel face. Biblically accurate angels, I guess. Uh, yeah, so there it is, folks. Hopefully you like my sketchbook tour. Uh, these are so much fun to do. And I, I want to end it with... Uh, my 500 creature thumbnails so let me show you that real quick and what that's all about i believe it's in here all right so uh let me scoot back here a little bit oh yeah just some i'm going to give you a little bonus i don't want to end this on two sketchbooks i'm going to show you three sketchbooks if you don't mind okay but mainly this one is some really small doodles Okay, so you might be wondering, Bobby, how often do you draw? How many sketchbooks do you have? <laughs> I'm looking on my couch because I'm not showing you everything I got. Um, I probably have eight sketchbooks right now, and there's maybe two that I lost, and I don't know where they are. They're in my house somewhere. There's some more ballpoint pen work, some creatures. Okay, but I, I really do have to show you. I think it's in here, so let, let me... Flip through this real quick. No, it's not in there. Ah, I had the wrong sketchbook. This one. Okay. This one has my 500 creature thumbnails. Let me zoom out so I can actually show you everything. Starting at one. Okay. And when I say 500, I literally mean 500. And I just kept going. Scribble after scribble after scribble. Let me zoom in here so you can actually see it. Scribble after scribble. And I numbered them all because I have OCD. And I just kept going. And what this did is it gave me a library of future creatures that I could use for whatever purpose that I, that I sought after. All right. Now, I, I encourage everyone to do it. I actually made a video specifically for this. And I, I encourage you to try to do this. Okay, you can spend 20 minutes, um, 30 minutes a day. You don't have to do this in one sitting. But it's it's a lot of really good practice in order to become a better sketcher, and also to time your brain on, you know, knowing when to stop. Hope you liked today's lesson. Hopefully, if it was a lesson, but especially sketchbook flip throughs. I love doing these. I'm going to do more in the future, and. I appreciate all of you. I'm very grateful. 